Oh my goodness, what a great game. What a great game. <laughs> if you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan, it was a fantastic mm-hmm. game. If you are 49er faithful, if you wanted the 49ers to win one for the Bay, mm, mm, mm. before we get into the football, got to meet Jay-Z. I don't, I don't know. I'm not throwing up that uh, right there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think that's worse. But all right. Yeah. Uh, so I got to meet Jay Z, man, and uh, he was on the side. I was working the sidelines before the games, and got to see him. And so uh, it was me and Mike Rob. Mike Rob was like, "Yo, Steve, you see that?" I said, "Absolutely." <laughs> he said, "Man, I think I'm." I said, "Man, I'm." He gave me an eye contact, like, "Yeah." He was taking a picture with his daughter. Uh, she was doing some um, uh, Instagram thing or whatever, and so we caught. Uh, Oh, this is a super pause. Caught eyes. Um, <laughs> caught eyes. I was like, that's my chance. So I walked over to him. And I said, hey, dog, it's an honor to meet you. I said, I want a picture. I said, man, but you're a bad man. Mm-hmm. He goes, no, here's what he said. He said, I said, it's, a, it's an honor to meet you. He goes, man, you're a bad boy. I said, shoot. You a bad man, dog. And then he switched it up. It's like, well, you a bad man too. But um, <laughs> I'm trying to get like you, big brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it it was dope, man, to be able to uh, just the opportunity to meet him. You could just kind of, you know, how some people you meet, you just tell, you can feel it, or, or you can feel the confidence. Uh, but you could also also feel in this exchange the authenticness mm-hmm. um, of just the mutual respect. Uh, about him, and he was like, um, I introduced myself. He was like, man, I know who you are. <laughs> and That's going to feel four- huge. It's, yeah, that means much taller than myself, right? Made me feel, <laughs> I, I walked back, like I was six feet tall, but, um, and then Mike Rod was right behind me, adapt him up. Um, and it was just cool to, being at the game, to be able to see all the different people, but also, uh, take it all in. By Thursday, the crowd started to move in, and there were all kinds of things that were going on. So here's what I mean. A lot of folks drove in from the Bay. A lot of mm-hmm. 49ers f- drove in from L.A. There was a ton of 49ers guys there. After the game, not not yesterday, we're talking about 10 o'clock, Joe? Mm-hmm. 10 o'clock. 10 o- 10.05. Mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan walks in the hotel with his wife, two kids, his dad behind him. 49er faithful. Y'all were dog cussing at Kyle Shanahan. Man, you F this up for us. You F and let us down. You did this. You did that. His two kids and his wife were right yeah. there. His dad. Like he like he woke up and said, hey, you know, let me screw this up. Right. Man, we, this, this whole fan thing, man, we got to figure out how do we really want to interact? Because what if Kyle Shanahan goes, hey, man, you, you, you forgot. I built this team. Not you. What if they they start? What if he went through the whole season? He saw a fan and like, hey, Kyle said, no, you didn't do nothing. I understand you're disappointed. You don't think he's disappointed? Sure. Sure. At, from the fan side of it, I don't mind telling a coach how you feel. Cussing him out with his wife and kids there is is different for sure. You know, everybody's entitled. You are entitled of your opinion. Mm-hmm. This is a free country. You can voice your opinion. You can respond the way you want to respond. Like, this is just me, right? It's just me. This is my thinking sometimes. God bless my walk because there are times where I have to. Now, it's against the law, but sometimes <laughs> I've seen some fans where I want to, based off what you said, I want to kick your teeth in. Yeah, knock them upside But that's the head. not what I do. For sure. But to tell your head coach who just lost a Super Bowl how you F this up for us? Like, you think he doesn't know that? Right. 
You think that was his goal? To ruin your your Super Bowl experience? God bless all the other 53 players that <laughs> what they had to do. Mm-hmm. But don't just about you. Man, I thought that was it was classless, man. I mean, I've seen a couple of people, and and as 49ers fans, I, I want to know how we respond to this. I get on here every year talking about how the Cowboys lose every January. 49ers lose every January or February. It's 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 the same picture. Uh, the Ford, Cowboys won 96. 49ers won 95. It's been a longer drought for the 49ers. But they don't get that Cowboys choking tag. Uh, they've, they've avoided that somehow. And I, I genuinely don't know what the difference is after this. I, I know the difference. I, I, there is a difference. That's called the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like they went out there and got blown out. No, they didn't. It was a hell of a football game. Let's well, that's part of the problem. They're up 10 in all of these Super Bowls. Every time the 49ers get to the Super Bowl under Shanahan, they post a double-digit lead at some point in the game. That's. But, but I, I would say this game was a little bit different. Sure. Because you did have circumstances and things that happened. First of all, the game coming out, it was a chess match. You know, I'm not... The Chelsea and Andy Reid, that's between them two. Sure. I, I don't know what was said. You don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it was out of context because it wasn't. The visual age says a picture is worth a thousand words. A video is worth uh, 10,000 words, sure, right? Yeah, yeah. But it obviously was okay with them because they sorted it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And tempers flare. I've seen players. We've seen players get into it. We've seen. I've seen two coaches about to fight each other on the sideline. Listen, it wasn't the only thing that happened on the Chiefs sideline in this game. Hmm. Speak Rasheed on. Rice at the end of the game. I would argue a worse time for this to happen. The end of the game got in Mahomes' face and throw me the damn ball. We we shouldn't be playing this overtime. I was open. Hmm. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, oh yeah, it happens. And it, it, it was very funny, the reaction online, because especially this Super Bowl with all the new fans Kelsey brought in this season, people mm-hmm. being like, oh, well, you can't do that. That's not some people watching football for one of the first time, which I have no problem with. More people, the merrier. But people seeing that, that being their first experience with, with it is very funny. Well, I, I knew I knew I had heard uh, Kelsey was locked in in practice. They said Patrick Mahomes oh, yeah. out there, Patrick Mahomes out there throwing dimes in practice. Um, 49ers, they they were emphasizing CMC, which you saw they were going to do that, trying to make adjustments to figure out how Spags was going to play. Mm-hmm. Man, there was a lot of things that were going on that people just don't understand the why and the how. And like watching things go on. I need to go on record right now. I'm just, let's just talk about the wide receivers, Mm -hmm. right? For both teams. Brandon Ayuk was running excellent routes. For whatever reason, he was not being, he was not getting looked at. At all. I believe Debo Samuels had 11 targets Mm -hmm. for three catches, 33 yards. Hamstring, for him gritting it out, with the pulled hamstring is excellent. But I got several other former wide receivers that were texting me and said, and I want to bring it up, I'm a Debo fan. I am. There's no shade here. This is analytics. This is analyzing. When I look at the San Francisco 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, those guys have done an outstanding job of understanding how and what kind of offense they want to have. They got CMC. They got Mitchell, they have Kittle, they have Brandon Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, the agitator. They even use Ray Ray McLeod. They also use Brandon Ayuk. This is my humble opinion. That's worth about 89 cents, okay? Brandon Ayuk is the surgeon. He is the route runner. I said it when Nikhil Harry was coming out of Arizona State that I believe he was the better route runner and would have a more successful career. Based on watching Nikhil Harry's tape, 
And when I watch Nikhil Harry's tape, I also watch not just the targets, but plays, just mm-hmm. play after play, possession. I just watch the possession of his of the, that guy and see other guys. And I thought Brandon Ayuk was a more rel- well-rounded wide receiver than Nikhil Harry. Mm-hmm. Brandon Ayuk, I believe, is the second best route runner outside of George Kittle because George Kittle is a tight end who dominates. Mm-hmm. But Brandon Ayuk is the best route runner on that team. He really is. Oh, yeah. The guy who struggled to get off man-to-man jam coverage was Debo Samuels. He struggled to get open. He struggled to get off the line. I thought McDuffie, for both teams, was the best player on the field in this game. I thought he had an unbelievable game. He was yeah. everywhere. He had that big uh, blitz that, that forced Purdy to throw that had them settle for the field goal in overtime. And every time you saw Purdy thrown his direction, it was as if it was as if he knew the route that was called. He was everywhere this game. I think if Debo Samuels is a, a unique football player, but to be a complete Wide receiver, I think Debo Samuels has to have some work put in in offseason so he doesn't pigeonhole himself into doing all of these uh, gadget plays that they have him doing. Well, how much, because you even just brought it up, how much of his releases and everything in this game was hampered by the hamstring, which he also agitated again. No, he was getting, he was getting clamped down uh, prior to the hamstring. Sure. Okay. All right. He was he was getting clamped down. In the first half, I saw him doing some moves where he just, he just had no separation. Right. There was no separation. Right. And that's I think a credit to how good these corners are in Kansas City as well. I look under the um I fall under the umbrella or put me in a bucket of no, it's not the how good the corners are. <laughs> right. It's how good you need to be as a wide receiver. I favor a wide receiver. I could see when that. I look at yeah. a when I look at a wide receiver. I don't say, man, that's great coverage. I say, what can a wide receiver have done better to get open? Sure. That's how I look at it. Because that's our job. Our job is to get open. Right. Our job is not to say, man, that corner sure locked me down today. (laughs) And and to your point, Ayuk was running free a lot this game. Oh, Scott free. I'm to Scott free. Purdy wasn't looking his way. And had the 49ers won this game in regulation, a wide receiver was probably going to win MVP, Jawan Jennings. He, he man, he played well, unbelievably. Right? He was at which uh, a fun fact, which got said during the game that I completely forgot. The highest ranked quarterback coming out of high school in this game, Jawan Jennings, uh, threw the only touchdown for the 49ers yeah. until he caught a touchdown later in the game. He was a monster. <laughs> only two people in NFL history have caught a touchdown pass and thrown a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. The other player is. I think they. The, I think they went back and reviewed that game. It doesn't actually count. Uh, but no, it was Nick Foles. It was Nick Foles. <laughs> Nick I've Foles been waiting is the only for that other one. Fun fact. Insane. Who? <laughs> yeah, the New England Patriots. Um, just very. I mean, that play, the 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 Juwan Jennings touchdown play. They tell regular quarterbacks don't throw across the field like that. That mm-hmm. ball hung in the air about an hour and a half. I thought for certain it was gonna, <laughs> it was going to get picked when I saw CMC come down with it, and no one else be on that side of the field. I said, "Oh no, oh no." Yeah. Before the end of the half, the bell cow, CMC, man, he ha- he was an impact player. If they're the one, I, I think it would have been CMC eight. He had 80 yards rushing and at this time at my note taking and 80 yards passing at the time. To me, where the 49ers completely lost this game was coming out of halftime. They abandoned the run entirely. You had sent something in the group chat. I tried to respond. We had no service in Arizona, so it never sent. Oh, yeah, I was at that house again where there was a middle of nowhere where 
Yeah. Uh, y'all are at that house where when you escape prison, that is the house <laughs> that everybody in the house is going to die because you can't call the police. Uh, oh, by the uh, time that- <laughs> it's a it's a like fourteen million dollar mansion before you you're acting like it's some like that, abandoned shack. No, no, it's not abandoned desert. shack. But you you got like you don't even have a full bar. You got like half a bar. It's no reception <laughs> no, in none. there. None. None. But I I responded. I was just like there. They're falling into the same trap the Ravens fell into. And as a player, I wanted to ask you, mm. how hard is it to stick to a game plan? Because to me, this is what, when the Patriots were rolling, when they used to be a real franchise 20 years prior, they did never abandon what was work. They were like, listen, we know this is a war of attrition. It may not work in the first quarter. It's going to work. This was working in the first half of the 49ers. They were running the ball all over the Chiefs. Like you said, CMC they was doing whatever he wanted. Third and quarter. diligent. Third they quarter. Diligent, yeah. Brock Purdy dropped. It was like they were trying to prove a point as opposed to win the game. They were trying to prove, no, Brock can do that. And Kansas City said, thank you. We'll take that three and out. Yep, we'll take the ball back. No problem. Thank you. I'm not necessarily sure what their thinking was because it also, you got to give credit to the Kansas City Chiefs. The way they were able to blitz and the style of blitzes and they just stayed diligent, Mm -hmm. right? They, they, They kept laying integrity. What got the 49ers also in trouble, losing Greenlaw. Big time, for sure. When they lost Greenlaw, there was even plays that when they were running the football, Fred Warner was taking on blocks. And if Greenlaw was in the game, he would have filled that gap. But they had a younger guy in there who was his backup, who I don't know. And should I know? Don't matter. They didn't win. Okay? Just going to be – I'm an analyst. I'm not paying attention to the fourth guy. Okay? I'm just not. You may say, well, that's your job. I know darn well there's some jobs y'all got out there that y'all don't pay attention <laughs> at every single minute, unimportant detail. I am I, That's unimportant. Right. And, and that, the backup to Greenlaw is unimportant. Well, Steve, he got hurt, so he became, he became important. That's why I'm bringing this up. Now I'm bringing it up my way. He was out of position. I, you know what? Let me show you how out of position he was. Let's go to the tape then, right? So you get you get the motion. Kelsey's down at the bottom. Mikael Hartman is right there. Gibson played against him in Cleveland. You want to know the scouting report? Does not have a consistent ability to track the football. He cannot track the football to save a game. How about that? Mm-hmm. So this is so right here goes in. Look at this free access. Mikhail Hartman is run down the field. Now watch Gibson. Gibson looks up in the air, has no eye, has no apparent look. Yeah. If you're gonna be this close, well, get that brother an icon. Give him something that he can capture a photo because you that close and have no idea what to do. Excellent. Let me rewind it again. Who is he covering? Look at that. No idea what's going on. No. That's just, man, that's just young. That's being a young player. That's what you talk. That's what you call being an inexperienced. So people are going to take this as a swipe to say, well, coach didn't go over things. Let's take a brief sec. Let's take a brief sidetrack Sally or sidetrack Smitty and talk about this uh, overtime stuff. Kyle Yusek. Love Kyle. Used to play with him. Talk to him before the game. Respect the heck out of him. He's a Harvard grad. Multiple players said that they have they did not know the overtime rule. There has been, since the overtime rule has changed, there has been 28 postseason games since then. It's been two years. And this season will be three years since they changed the game. And they changed the game to more be like high school and college, which everybody gets a chance 
to score because people were complaining about, man, my team doesn't get the opportunity. Specifically the Chiefs and Bills. Call them out. It's the Chiefs and Bills who complained. I don't necessarily think it was just the Chiefs and the Bills because I've been in the I've been on a few of these committees when I was a player oh, of so. like just hearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the two that are announced is it but bro, it's thirty two complainers now. Oh, definitely. You, I, <laughs> don't but don't what I, what I, I remember. let's not steamroll one of them because it's about four or five, it's about ten of them in the uh, back seat. Now they may be hiding, <laughs> but they still <laughs> are what on I, the complain train. What I'll say is when Brady beat Mahomes in overtime at home, the Chiefs were we're crying real loud about uh, not getting a fair chance. And then when they beat the Bills, when when they did the 13 seconds and then got the ball yeah. and beat Josh Allen, the Bills were like, we agree with the Chiefs. That is unfair. <laughs> that's, that's why I bring those two up. They're okay. the ones who were the loudest criers about this. Let's listen to what uh, Kyle Shanahan says and his decision. No, we never thought about their fourth and four. I mean, even if we do go and score, they still can go down and match it. And um, so, no, there wasn't a thought there. Uh, it's just something we talked about with, you know, the, none of us have a ton of experience of it, but we went through all the analytics and talked with those guys, and we just thought it'd be better. We wanted the ball third. Um, if both teams matched and scored, we wanted to be the ones who had the chance to go win. And um, we got that field goal, so we knew we had to hold them to at least to a field goal. And if, if we did, then we felt it was in our hands after that. Now, let me tell you how it goes for some people who don't know. Because people have been talking about it. I'll tell you. Throughout the offseason, where there's OTAs, which is optional team activities, training camp, every team is visited. Visited by NFL referees. And in that NFL referees visit, they go over practice. And they instruct in practice, hey, buddy, he, here are the points of emphasis and who, here are the new rules that have changed. And they go over them in front of the team. Did you know that, Coley? I believe you've talked about that before, so yeah. Yes, okay. For the people who don't. Sure. So at some point this offseason, referee will, will come into the team and they will, they will referee practice. They will throw flags. Hey, left tackle, move up. Hey, wide receiver, show me offensive, uh, uh, defense alignment. You can't hold when you do the TE stunt. Corner, that's pulling. That's pass interference. We're going to call that. We are instructed to call that. Mm -hmm. And then there's a banter back and forth in the meeting. Oh, that's BS. That's bad call. They tell you what's defenseless, and you get to talk and ask them questions. Special teams coaches, offensive line coaches, defensive line coaches, everybody has the autonomy. They have the opportunity. They have the chance. I'm in all the words because <laughs> here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that you are an NFL football player, and you're telling me over the last two years you have no idea that they have changed the rules and you're going to throw your head coach under the bus and say, we never worked on it. I can tell you, I don't, they've worked on something. Now sure. they may have worded it differently. They may not have said, Hey buddy, this is, we're going into overtime. They will say, Hey, we need to stop to win, to give the ball to the offense. We need to score to win. But they changed this rule two years ago. And we're in a society, any rule that has changed, do they not have commentary on every station that does sports, every podcast to complain about how erroneous this rule changes? Listen, if they hadn't changed the rule, they still lose because they settled for a field goal. You would have to, under the old rules, they lost this game, let alone the new rules. No set of rules did they win this game. You not knowing the rules is like this. This may be, some people may say Steve makes the dumbest analogies. This is one of my another dumb analogies. <laughs> well, let's hear it first and then we'll decide. Okay. So, you know, um, there's this thing called registration mm -hmm. on your car. Mm -hmm. And they give you a tag. And I discover, or maybe I just don't pay attention. You know, they sit in that registration in the mail. 
and I'm going to make an excuse. My wife, the coach of the team, gets the mail. She doesn't pay my registration. However, I'm still driving around, what they call it? Now I'm just riding around dirty. Yeah. <laughs> right? Riding dirty, oh yeah. I'm riding dirty with a with a kilo of anything <laughs> in the back trunk. I get pulled over. And the only thing I say is that's an illegal search, but I take zero ownership right. of acknowledging, yes, they illegally searched my car, but I gave them every excuse because I did not pay my registration. My point is take responsibility. You telling me that you didn't know the rule change happened in overtime, that's something two years ago? But here's the other part. Here, here's my... Stop them. How, how about how about make a stop? Uh, listen, the the Forty ers are getting a lot of hell for and deserved hell for saying they didn't know the rules and Shanahan saying, "Oh, we were going for the third score." Not it's just a, the first it's one. Embar- it's embarrassing. Listen, the Chiefs won the game, so no one else is saying this. I don't think they knew one of the rules either. They got that playoff awfully quick to end. I think they thought they had to beat the clock. They thought they only had 15 minutes. I don't think they knew they had another quarter if they well, didn't and, score hey, there. Reed. Because I didn't so, know. Hey, I Reed unsure. is so throwing salt on it. Yeah, we went over it. We went over everything. <laughs> Boy, it's all we practiced. We didn't even all, practice anything else. That's all we practiced. But I would tell you, Andy is so detailed. Their, their meeting before, their last meeting is two and a half hours. And he talks about everything i'm pretty sure mr analytic kyle shanahan they probably talked about some situation that some of the 49ers players made it seem like they don't practice any situational football never their coach has been in a their coach has been in college all of his life (laughs) well one thing too we talk about andy Reid now obviously he's won three super bowls let's rewind it 15 years what was said about Andy Reid he doesn't know these situations he doesn't he know can't how to win handle. the big one well it wasn't even that it was why he couldn't win the big one it was because yep. these situations would come up he would freeze he wouldn't have his, his timeouts for the last couple of minutes he just didn't understand uh clock down and distance any of the situations so for people who are like oh Kyle Shanahan this is who he is for the rest of his life it's a part of it for sure that he'll never be able to erase these losses no doubt But if you look at Andy Reid, this second act of his head coaching career, his post-Philadelphia coaching career, you can certainly change the narrative a little bit, if not a lot. Because Andy Reid, I mean, you can go back to when the Chiefs hired Andy Reid. People were like, this is a mistake. This is a bad hire. This is a retread. we We know what he is. He has a ceiling. And then you draft someone like Patrick Mahomes, your ceiling gets changed quickly. It just shows you. Quarterback play is everything. Quarterback play is everything. Let's jump into that, the the Mahomes versus Brady. Well, before we get there, there's another debate that's been happening uh, over the years that I think is dead and buried. uh, And it goes back to that fight between Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid. Why was Travis Kelsey yelling at Andy Reid? Because he took him off the field and uh, it resulted in a fumble on a run play. And Kelsey said, I should have been out there. Why wasn't Travis Kelsey out there? Because he's not a tight end, and he doesn't know how to block. That's why he wasn't out there. The uh, reason that – hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, why did they almost not make it to this game? Because Mikal Hardman fumbled on the goal line a few weeks ago because Travis Kelsey couldn't hold his block on the red zone. Anyone comparing Travis Kelsey to Rob Gronkowski – I don't even know what the argument is anymore. Travis Kelsey is a wide receiver, a damn good wide receiver. A tight end, he is not. I can't give him that. Can't give him that. He's not a wide receiver. As a wide receiver, he's a tight end. He's a. You just call him that because he's receiver. slow. That's the only reason. He's big, no, slow, calling- and he operates in the middle of the field. He's a wide receiver. He's a big wide receiver. No, I'm calling him that because his he's listed on the. I know what he's listed at as 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 tight end. I know what and he's. I listed believe at. he's a tight end. And he he register as a tight end. And he's a great tight end. He doesn't do receiver. half of the job I, of a tight end. I, I don't care. He's he's changed. <laughs> he's changed how you can do it. He may he. Listen, he's a big things, slot receiver. No, he's a tight end. And don't oh, disrespect. God. There's some things why some wide receivers do. Well, Debo Samuels is an excellent wide receiver. 
He's not sure. a great route running wide receiver. For sure. Right? He they put him in motion, do this, do that. He's a wide receiver. Sure. I, I a, people say similarly about he's Randy a, Moss. Travis Kelsey is a tight end. Oh. Travis well. Kelsey is a tight end. I thought against the Ravens, he blocked pretty good. Coming off of yeah, he well when he gets a head start and can run into a linebacker, yeah, he's great at that. But I'm talking hey, locking bro, up, hey, locking up in the he, trenches. He can't do that. I, nah, man, he's he's a lover. He's not necessarily a fighter. So. Right. <laughs> Gronk was like the like a top five receiver and top five left tackle simultaneously no, in his at his no, peak. Gronk is a tight again another tight end. Gronk no, no, no. I'm saying receiver. he was doing both of those things. Like I would argue, Kelsey, Kelsey's one of the best playoff receivers not wide receiver just receiver of the football of all time yes, absolutely no doubt uh yep. he, he punched that ticket long ago ding dong in terms of all time because we're about to get into these all-time quarterback discussion all-time tight end i don't see any argument you can put kelsey over Gronk. not one i i'm not arguing with you I, people I are just... <laughs> people oh, are I'm, it I'm, happens I'm, on the I'm, internet every day and i just don't know and that one drives me more insane than the one we're about to get into because the one we're about to get into Patriots fans have been prepped for the entire Brady career. And I'll tell you why when Brady first came up, who was dubbed to be the next great quarterback? It was Peyton Manning. And then what did Tom Brady do his very first start blew Peyton Manning off the field because they were in the same division. He played him again later that season, did the same thing, did it repeatedly in the playoffs over and over again, has a 12 and five career record against him. That conversation died in like 2007. But you know, what's interesting about everything you're saying that I hear, no one is really crediting how that team was constructed and some of the great oh, players that were on that team. I'm glad you brought that up because it gets to this. We're getting to that because it gets to because this. Because like there, there was some like Willie, Willie McGinnis. Oh yeah. Richard Seymour. Ted, Teddy Bruschi. Richard Seymour. Right? Ty My, Law. Richard, Ty Law. Mm-hmm. Richard Seymour. Asante Samuels. Like they constructed well, Lawyer Malloy. Uh, what did you say? Asante wasn't there yet. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about over the years. For sure, no doubt. The different type of pieces. Oh yeah. That were there. Like you got to have the quarterback, but a running back. Kevin. Fa- Kevin Falk. Kevin Falk does not get enough credit as being such a versatile key component to that team. Dirty is what. Uh-oh. Dirty is Dion Branch. Mm-hmm. How well. Dion went out there, balled, went to Seattle, got paid, and disappeared. He, they're still looking for Dion Branch uh, he, with Amelia Earhart. He I came mean, back. Nowhere he came back to, to the Patriots. <laughs> exactly. But he was he was with Amelia Earhart of when course. he went to Seattle. Just lost, right? Just so many good players on that team over the years that that just plug, not even plug and play, but. Knew they their were job. part of the puzzle piece. They knew right? their Without job and they did it well. this guy and that guy, the pitcher is not complete. No doubt. N- and- now, Brady is like the corner of the puzzle piece that happens to be like a huge piece. Yeah, he's, 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 he's the picture on the box of it completed. Yeah, you keep yes. Looking, you keep looking back at that, making sure, am I doing this right? Is that yeah, supposed to go there? You. Yeah, he that's the He's the picture on the box. But without the pieces. Listen. I, I, well, I, I can fast forward to that right now because, like I said, I think McDuffie was the best player in this game. I think if Brady went out and scored 19 and 17 points in the Super Bowl and AFC Championship, he wouldn't be called the greatest quarterback of all time. They'd say, hey, that was a lot of the defense, which people are starting to do a couple days mm-hmm. removed. But this, yep. if this were Mahomes' first ring – Versus his third, that's where the order of things comes in because obviously he, you, he will fall into the Russell Wilson category. Definitely, no doubt. But because it's his third, it's not that big of an emphasis. I've heard, and I would love to get your take on it because you were on the field for one of them. That Brady's defense carried him. What was the final score of Patriots Panthers? I don't mean this to be a dick. I'm genuinely asking. Was it a low scoring nine seven affair, something like that? <laughs> 
No, it was up there. Yeah, was, <laughs> you scored. Moose scored. Ricky Prohl scored yeah. the go-ahead touchdown late. Like, there are a lot of touchdowns given up by that all-time defense. And I love that in the, defense. In the, in the second half. Yeah, oh, it was the second quarter and fourth quarter were all of the points. It was a very peculiar game. Very strange game indeed. Um, but I don't remember the clamps being brought out on that particular day. I remember Brady going out there slinging that thing around. That's what I remember. Yeah, I, I remember him going, what, 60 yards for the game winning. Field goal. Right. Not touchdown. Oh, yeah. Field goal. Listen, that's all he needed. It was tied. He didn't, he didn't need the seven. <laughs> exactly. If he needed the seven, it would have been a different story. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it that was the original conversation. And then all of a sudden he gets Randy Moss. And it was like, oh, okay, now he he has the offense. See, people also forget year two with Tom Brady led the league in touchdown passes. But that gets glossed over because it was a yeah, defensive yeah. team. Um, and then what happens at the at the at the – the latter end of the odds. Who gets drafted out of Cal to the Green Bay Packers? Oh, Aaron Rodgers. He's the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. Yeah, Brady's got the resume, but this guy is the most talented. And then he goes out there, lose year after. He got that early ring, and then every year, same story. One seed, lose. One seed, lose. One seed, lose. To the point where, all right, we can't even really argue this guy anymore. Sure, we could go the advanced analytics route if we wanted to but we know this game is played on the field Mahomes is the first player that has that talent of Manning and Mahomes and now is actually punching his ticket is actually getting those wins where those two couldn't for so long this is the first time I'm sitting here like oh yeah this guy is worthy of that conversation but if we're having an all-time debate you really do get a look into you're picking nits you're getting into the minutiae of every little small thing and I know damn well if Tom Brady scored 19 points in the Super Bowl, which he has done, people held it against him. It should be held yeah. against Mahomes in the same argument if we're having the same argument. I don't I don't really know if we're having an argument. I don't even <laughs> think this, it, it, this is a debate. Where I sit as a former player, when I look at Patrick Mahomes, baby, go, go. Here's what I'm saying. I'm not sitting in the category of game changer, game manager. Here's what I'm saying. If 15 has the football with the Kansas City Chiefs, mm -hmm. you need to be worried. My point is he will make the right decision. He plays greedy football. And I've said this a few times and a lot of people said, he, oh, he does take what the defense gives him. No, he doesn't. Not all the time. Sometimes he, oh, sometimes he doesn't want to throw <laughs> the check down. Sure. He will look at the check down and say, nope, I'll pass. He looks at the check down the same way I looked at dinner the other night when they passed um, well, well, caviar. We had <laughs> caviar at the table. They said, here you go. I said, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right? No. Not for me. No. And that's what he looks like. And that caviar, Pacheco, at times, <laughs> was Travis Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Right? It depends on who it is. And sometimes he's like, nope, I'm going to throw it to Gray. I'm going to throw it to someone else. Now, they may have dropped it, but he does that. Patrick Mahomes, to me, is I'm looking at Patrick Mahomes the same way I look at Brady, the same way I Correct. look at Steve Young, the same way I look at Joe Montana, Correct. the same way I watch Boomer Sizer, the same way I watch some of these other quarterbacks that we – Already know if he was on your team, you would be rooting for him. Oh, yeah. I'm saying I'm enjoying watching a bona fide superstar prove every freaking year mm -hmm. how he can win the game despite the conditions, despite the lack, despite of having abundance. Mm -hmm. Juju Smith-Schuster has a Super Bowl ring right now. Tony's got two. Who? who? Kadarius Tony has two. Yes! <laughs> he didn't even dress. No. He, he wasn't even on the field. Oh, he wasn't even in uh, city limits. Yes. <laughs> right? And my point is, I just want to enjoy watching... A guy under 30 years old Crazy. go out there and tell you, I can throw it, I can flick it a wrist, throw run a football, it. run it, and then just do something that I'm not supposed to. I'm going to look here and throw there. <laughs> he did that on, 
on one of the late conversions to to Kelsey, he he ran right and threw it across his body. I was like, you didn't need to no look there, but you did it anyways. I yeah. thought that part Sometimes was interesting. Just, how about this one? Let's go to the um, let's go to the interception. It was that. So people think it was to someone else. It was to Kelsey. Correct. I just agree. put a little bit too much sauce on it. I agree. Right. Four man rush. They're running some kind of invert. They're running uh, zone coverage. Now, this is what I talk about sometimes. He's greedy. So he steps up in the pocket, right? Should he, Bro, he should run. Correct. He should just go ahead and run. Now, he has down at the bottom, down here at the uh, left side of the 20, he has Rasheed Rice. Doesn't look at him. Ain't interested. Nope. Don't want it. If you go back. He could ch- got a little late check down leak. He looks at Rasheed Rice. What does he say? Nah, yeah. I don't want to throw you the football because I don't want a three yard catch. I want the, I, I don't want no oodles and noodles. I want a, I want that steak. So he goes out there, decides to run. He says, nope. This he double clutches it. He did a lot like, in the first half. He was he was double like, clutching I'm, a lot. I think I think I'm a th- nope. I don't want to. Tries to put a little touch to Kelsey. Kelsey says, that ain't to me. <laughs> Who you throwing it to? Not me. Interception. Tackle. All right? Just kind of showing you some things. That interception on that. You want to go to the game-winning play? Can I take? Can I break down the game-winning play? For sure. The game-winning play is sprint right option. Mm-hmm. But Andy Reid and Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy doesn't get enough credit. I think Matt Nagy has played, had called a pretty good game because Matt Nagy was struggling in the beginning of the year. For sure. Everybody's talking about the, the receivers. Yeah, the receivers had drops, but they also were put in bad situations by okay play calling. Congratulations to Matt Nagy. He called an excellent game. Mm-hmm. He called some plays that you go, what are we doing? What he was doing is setting the tone. We're going to screen you. We're going to throw the ball we're gonna run the ball yeah. uh but yeah break down this this game winner uh because i want to i want to talk about the last play of regulation too before they they kick the game tying field goal this is old spring right option and this is how i know they knew exactly what they're doing talk about savvy va- uh, uh, savvy veteran bro kelsey runs a screen but he runs it so cavalier. Mm-hmm. He's like, I know I'm not an option, but I'm going to make sure you do not intercept this football. Okay? They put him in motion. You remember they let let him go because he wasn't a complete receiver and got Kadarius Tony. Okay. Goes in motion. Watch Kelsey. Kelsey is not running a route. Kelsey's going to act like he's running a sprint right. But if he runs his sprint right, He's in the way. Mikhail Harmon's going to run out of real estate. Right. So look at Kelsey. Kelsey's like, nope. And they run the sprint right option, but the sprint right option is only to one guy. All right. And it's, if I remember correctly, the same play they ran to Sky Moore last year in the Super Bowl. Yes. They Sprint right option is a, spe, is a staple in the West Coast offense. Andy Reid runs a... The, one of the last breeds of the West Coast offense. Sean McVay, uh, Sean Payton, West Coast guy, old school West Coast guy. Hmm. Doug Peterson, he's a uh, uh, um, Andy Reid tree, runs an old West Coast. Obviously, Andy Reid, Matt Nagy, West Coast. John Gruden, West Coast. The rest of the guys... Kyle Shanahan. I'll go through the Kyle Shanahan tree. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, Gary Kubiak, Ben Johnson, Luke Get, uh, Luke Getty, mm-hmm. Nathaniel Hackett, Thomas Brown. Oh yeah, uh, Frank. Right. Frank Wright is a Andy Reid guy. Yeah. guy. Okay, Matt Lafleur. Man, the rest of the league is under this umbrella. Right. There's only really about four teams, four or five teams that are not. Shane Waldrick, he just left yeah. Seattle. Same thing. In Carolina, uh, Dave Canales, mm-hmm. same thing. 
They're all running the same offense. That's why you got these peaks and valleys. Yeah. These defense coordinators are getting smarter and smarter because they understand what's going on. You're seeing the same thing every week. Yeah, you're seeing every week. <laughs> Zach, Zach Taylor, Cincinnati. Yes. Yeah. So this this last play of regulation. Uh, ten, which one? Which one? Ten seconds left. The the incompletion to Kelsey when uh, he throws it to the I think I have that the front left corner. Yeah, no, I just wanted to talk it through. Okay. Uh, it's a low snap. Creed Humphrey did not have a great game. Uh, luckily, they don't have to worry about that because they won the game. But he had a couple uh, horrible snaps. And and yeah. Mahomes opened the second he, half with a terrible hey, pitch. Do you know what? Do, do you want to know why? Why Creed Humphreys was having a horrible game? Why is that? Because Hargraves was in his face giving him the business. Hargraves, boy. I feel bad. Hargraves was balling. I feel terrible for Hargraves because he did have a tremendous game. Uh, he made that huge stop on third down where he just erased Pacheco, and then Mahomes scampered for the first down. The next play, obviously, but he was and Pacheco. He was like, came, Pacheco reappeared. With the Puerto Rican flag on his back. That's that's when he came back. At the... <laughs> but Hargrave was like, not again. Not two years in a row. I won't let this happen. He did his job. He didn't lose. Yeah. Um, but Rashi Rice was sitting wide open middle of the field. I understand it was 10 seconds left. Mahomes was just trying to get rid of the ball. Make sure you can at least still kick the field goal and tie the game. Uh, yeah. But if he hits Rashi Rice right there, there isn't even an overtime. They just win that game in regulation. He walks into the end zone. And to see Rashi Rice, a rookie, go and confront Patrick Mahomes, a guy we're talking about as potentially the greatest quarterback of all time, and say, hey, man. Or is on, is on pace sure. to be the greatest quarterback of all time. He's on pace. And, and, I say that in, and I say that because, one, he isn't done yet. No. no he sure He's also isn't. not dead. He's <laughs> under 30 years old. And I was I would suspect that this team is gonna retour. I said I was sitting here watching this game, and I said in my notes, they plan on getting rid of, they plan on re not resigning or getting rid of or adding so many better wide receivers sure. than the guys that they currently have because they left a lot of of plays on the field all year long. Oh yeah, and they made things more difficult for sure. themselves, which which is why Chris Jones was so emotional, and he said it. Man, this was exhausting this year because that defense had to make up for the what sixty plus drops by the wire by oh, the yeah. offense on that defense with a Patrick Mahomes. That's uh, that's not the norm. No, no, it was the first time a team that was top five in drops has ever, or I think led the league in drops, has ever yes. won the Super Bowl. So that, that's a testament to the defense. It's a testament to Mahomes being, believing in his guys. Uh, yep. M- MVS is, again, regular season, he's got nothing for anybody. Postseason, this guy <laughs> becomes prime Moss. I Clutch. can't understand Clutch. it. And it he had the worst broken tackle I've ever seen. Uh, seven yard gain. He breaks the tackle. Eleven yard loss. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, when Mahomes, he did that, Mahomes was there. What are you doing, bud? Go down. What is, what is bro, it? when he did that, I was. I said it. That's when I said I was like, man, he's done. Like, you got some better receivers out here, dog. Yeah, he's Super Bowl champ. Congratulations. I'm not. I'm not hating. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, watching no, no, no. Watching the game, you're going. I'm like, nope. Nope. Yeah, caught a nope. touchdown earlier and then does that. I was like, oh yeah. boy. Worst he, Yes. Worst broken tackle in NFL history. I've never seen like, anything it, like it. it. Bro, he came out like he was like he was you know that uh, I love uh National Geographic. So he came out like a like a like like an animal being born. I mean, just no legs. <laughs> he, hey, what are these things? Right? <laughs> But Rice, he goes back to the sideline. We're they're heading into overtime now. Like they, it couldn't be more tense. I'm watching this game. I have no stakes, and I'm like, I'm about to throw up. This game's making me nervous. <laughs> and Rashi Rice is over there. He said, "Get if you don't get me the ball, Patrick. Hey, if you don't get, and what do they do? Yeah, what do they do all over time? Full, hey, he called him by his full name <laughs> yeah, too, Patrick Levon Mahomes. Get me the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but we talked about it with CD Lamb, man." As wide receivers, we know what we're capable of. There's so much data oh, yeah. information. Like, hey, I know there's there's so many plays in the game 
that the quarterback can't see it all. Correct. He can't make it all. But you know, the ones you miss, you hope that, that doesn't cost you in the end, right? And while you say that, let me show you. Watch this. So much man coverage, so much blitz. So here's the problem. They slide left. I would tell you, one of the issues that the 49ers had, New England had, uh, 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 New England, the, Ra the Ravens had the same issue. Not having outlets, no hots. Sure. Your hot is going, a, who's, who is CMC, he's faking the play. Then he has to, he has to bow around Big Trent, but they run the scheme. They go left, you, and they, they slide left, but Spax does a great job of having everybody on the defense. They're going right to make the adjustment. Now, the so they're making it seem like they're pulling. Because they have to make it seem like it's a run play. So the left guard has to go all the way across the field out of position. Look at this. Your next outlet is actually four and a half, almost five plus yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now he has to, Brock Freddy has to get chased and run. Great job on McCaffrey. But stuff like this was happening. McCaffrey is just an excellent player, but right. look at it. The ball is on a 50. Look at this. Look at the blitz. Look at this. Their closest guy? Now, people say, oh, Steve, you're talking about uh, Debo, not great route runner. Debo runs a great route right here. But I'm not talking about when the receiver, when the corner's off. I'm talking about up close, he wasn't getting off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Again, tight coverage. Another one of these eye candies. Look at this. So, Brandon Ayuk wins. He's up top. Bang. Goes outside, crosses his face. Oh, yeah. Okay? But see, there's this guy. Uh, what's his name? John? Nah. Rick? Nah. I think it's Christopher Jones. Mm -hmm. Uh. They don't, they pass him up, gets him in there. Who does he throw it to? He throws it to, he throws it to Jawan Jennings because he's looking. His read is telling him, and see another, the outlet is right here, right? Who's, who's great, who's um, Kittle, but he has to what? He has to block first. That's where it goes. Yeah. So you got Kittle who's late, but here's the problem. He can't make that decision. And normally, you look to the side that the free rusher is. You rarely go free rusher in my face to the right. Sure. Let me look left. Right, right. You never do that. Right. The people in the stands are going, he's wide open. How does he see him? Because there's a black man chasing him that's 300 plus plows that wants to do very violent things. They're legal, but it's still extremely violent. Mm -hmm. Now, Steve, that's racist. If he was white, if he was Asian, I would say whatever nationality is, sure. because guess what? That man wears number 95. And a number 95 coming at you at that s speed and that amount of force when he lays on you is only going to crack your ribs. <laughs> They just had a great game against the San Francisco 49ers. They showed up, they showed us against the Buffalo Bills what they're capable of. They showed us what the Baltimore Ravens and Chris Jones even said in the in the post game. He said, when we knew we when we beat Buffalo, that dog fight, but when we beat the Baltimore Ravens, and he said, the best team in football, we knew we had a chance to beat anybody after that. Oh yeah. And Especially with that defense, they had to have felt like, oh, we just stopped the MVP. That defense is ridiculous. We'll stop whoever. But that leads me to looking towards next year. Chris Jones signed that one-year deal before this season. He gone. Missed week one. 
And he signed a deal that it doesn't allow Kansas City to even franchise him. So, yeah, I assume he's going to the highest bidder, and I'm happy for him. But for the Chiefs... But here's what I think, though. The highest bidder is going to be a damn good football team. It's not going to be... I agree. It's not going to be, hey, I'm going to the highest bidder. It's the... It's not Albert Haynes or a situation. It's, I think, yeah, yeah. Wash, or, uh, uh, Houston's got Come a ton man. of cap room and a need yeah. for him. Like, I, yeah, he's I, gonna go to he's gonna go to a team that I believe he also feels that he has a chance because he knows who's gonna be in the end. Sure, which is Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, so he yeah. knows I gotta go to a team that can help me. Right, right, but for I, and I can help them. For Kansas City, uh, we talk about receivers. This is a great draft. Uh, in my opinion, they need a receiver even at the end of the first round. But is that their biggest need? Obviously, some people say yes. Rice just set the record for uh, receptions in a playoff run by a rookie. Had a pretty good rookie year. Obviously, they're using them in a lot of uh, underneath stuff. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting there at the end of the first for the Chiefs, are you I'm targeting my mind? A receiver, I'm going through my mind right now. Or are you trying to get a potential Chris Jones replacement? Obviously, they've attacked the D line uh, recently. They went and got Kyle Loftus that last year, but not the same type of guy as Chris Jones. Very few people are. Well, so looking at the free age, how to the free age? I think they have 14 free agents that were that are starters, I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm looking at the mental. Li- I looked at the list. I didn't want to have too much paperwork up sure, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the list. And the names that stand out to me, Chris Jones, Tranquil. A lot of people not giving oh, yeah. credit. Tranquil played a uh, he ball. He ball with the Chargers and he ball with he's a free agent. Chris Jones, yes. But here's my question. But Darius Sneed is up too. Yeah. And he play, He didn't get a lot of credit. He played a hell of a football game. Sure did. He played a hell of a season. Mm-hmm. He's going to get paid and deserves it. Those three guys, Tranquil, Jones, and Sneed, with those guys le- leaving, because what's going to be offered to them in free agency, you'd be a fool to let to, to, to sure. walk away from it. For sure. And they're pr- they won two Super Bowls. Right. Right. I'm not saying that Super Bowls don't don't matter, but after winning two, there is this like they only got there's only so much money to go around. Yeah, get that life changing you know, money. It could, life not changing guarantee. money. It's not guaranteed. Right? Football. And say, hey, I could win another Super Bowl or be in a contender, or I could go to this other team and change the narrative for them, and I could be part of the not the building, but part of now a more stable infrastructure. Like, I'm now, like, they got the rebar. I'm the plaster in the pool now so that we can now swim in the pool and do it all what we need to do, and I get to be part of that. So, And I get paid. Right. And I, I, I sheesh. This sport specifically, more so than the other two major sports, if you have a chance to get life-changing money, I don't care if you go to a team that is is projected to go eat with or without you 0-17. Take the money. Take it. Uh, yes, but you see, you can have that J.C. Jackson effect all of a sudden. Now you take the money, they let you go, and all of a sudden it's life-changing, but you don't get all of the life-changing. Oh, it's still coming. Dude. They're still on the hook for them. I understand, but I'm just... I, no, but, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I, it, it can... It can backfire, right? Sure. You, it, it can expose you, right? Like Malcolm Butler, you can fire yourself. You fire yourself. Like, he, he's great story. But, man, that thing changed real quick. Definitely, but he got that money that he wasn't going to get from Agreed. the Patriots. And he still ended yes, up back I, with the Patriots, you know what I mean? <laughs> like especially, Yes. <laughs> especially if yes. you're leaving the Patriots specifically, you know you have a home to come back to. I can't speak yeah. for the other 31, not everyone else. <laughs> but with us, yeah, we'll let you go. You can come on yeah. back. Um, but for the for the 49ers, I mean, you just you just showed it with, uh, with the last play with Chris Jones. They have Trent Williams, and then they've kind of just got four guys. That that right side of the line, that feels like where they need to address. Because otherwise, 
I mean, obviously the back end uh, on the defense too, but they got Hufanga coming back, which will be a big help and would have been a big help in this game. Greenlaw is probably out next year. So they're going to have to find a, a one year replacement for that, which, which hurts. And hopefully he comes back to form Achilles injuries. You know who you, Cleveland Farrell is not getting any credit, man. He played, they were missing him. Chase Young finally made a play. Great job. Had a but great game. I was, that was that about the only great game he had. Sure, he, but he but he showed up. He did show up. He showed up. I he showed uh, he showed up. I I've just had a higher. The reason I'm saying this, I've you. had such a higher expectation for for Chase Young, and I and for he sure. just wasn't there. Uh but yeah, Chiefs won it again, and now it's the off season. Yes. Let me go in my bag. Let's say, go in the bag. I know you did see, it. I know you see. did it on social media. I saw you running some routes, chopping some forearms, but you also, congratulations, Julius Peppers. Well deserved. Oh, congratulations, the big Pep. Man, had the opportunity to see Pep, man. I love hey Pep Pep is not doesn't say a lot, but I'm so happy for him, man. You know, to really what it is for uh what he gets the opportunity to do, how. Um, looking forward to be, going to celebrate and partying with my boy Pep at Canton. Uh, got to see Devin Hester, congratulate him. Mm-hmm. And, man, one of the coolest things ever, man. One of the coolest things ever made me just cheese. Uh, saw saw uh, Andre Johnson, and he said, Steve, man, he gave me such a, the biggest hug. Man, I was so proud of him for him getting the accolades. And here's what he said. He said, hey, bro. You next. And he said, I'm, and he goes, and I'm going to be there. He didn't say invite me. <laughs> he said, he said, when you go in, I'm going to be there, bro. And I, I love me some Andre Johnson. Oh, yeah. There's no hate. There's no animosity. There's no, oh, I was better. I was this. It's just real love. And so for, to see um, and Andre Johnson, Devin has to get in, man. The only thing is with those being – Happy for those guys. Sad for my big bro, um, Tory Holt. Yeah. For him not to experience something that he deserves. Uh, he, you know, he's been he's been let down a few times now. He was there. Couple so that kind of, I just, ah, man. The the NFL Hall of Fame process. Parts of it I like. I like that they give people the floor during the voting process. I think Ed Reed was the shortest anyone had the floor. I think it was about six seconds. They were like, we're not going to waste our time here. But for the, there are a couple. I mean, Isaac Bruce retired as the all-time uh, yards leader for receivers, and it took him, I want to say, about a decade to get in. I don't understand yeah. the process. He almost mi- to, he almost missed it. I know, I know, and it doesn't make any sense. There are you, Tory Holt. I mean, and, this wasn't Andre's first time on the ballot, was it? Yeah, it was first ballot. Oh, yep. it wasn't first ballot. Okay, but I mean, To To uh, is the one everyone points to. He was second ballot. It's like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? So there's that was good. This is another great episode. See you next week. Next week, will we we will be breaking down two, not one, two potential first or second round draft picks. I will choose. Well, actually, I'm going to go on the neighbors. I got to go Malik neighbors because they already dropped it. But who I go after that, I don't know yet. I'm, st- I'm still trying. I'm still trying to figure it out. But man, I'm super excited, man. Me too. This is the this is 89 I'm Steve season. Smith. Right? I'm Steve Smith Sr. Coley Mick. This is cut to it.